I have recently gone mobile. And being mobile has its own challenges. Uh, one of those is uh, service information, documentation, uh, you know, being out on the road. Uh, I do carry a small printer with me uh, that I can hook up to my tablet and print up wiring diagrams if I need to and stuff. It is, it's, it's a pain in the butt, honestly. Uh, obviously, when I was in the shop, if it came to any kind of wiring or repair um, or service information or anything else, I really liked printing it up. Uh, or usually I would have a couple laptops going at one time so I could have service information on, on one laptop and, and a wiring diagram maybe on another. Um, but all those pieces of equipment were already up and running so you know it, it didn't cost me much time. Being mobile, obviously that's a challenge. Uh, you you kind of want to be in and out of you know these shops fairly quickly. Uh, you know it, it's kind of like flat rate, you know time is money. So that being said, um, before I went mobile, I actually invested into uh, Microsoft uh, Surface Pro 7. Uh, so this is the, the main tablet that I'm using for uh, invoicing for shops, uh, also for service information, wiring diagrams and everything. But, you know, some of those challenges are, like I said, let's say you're looking at a wiring diagram. Um, and you need service information, you know, so then you jump out of the service information or you jump out of the wiring diagram, you go into service information. I, I really like to have everything displayed um, in front of me. Uh, I like to take notes um, on the wiring diagrams, you know, power is good here, uh, ground, you know, is missing here, whatever it may be. Uh, this way I have documentation. Let's say I ever have to go back to the shop uh, for the same vehicle. Um, you know, I, I have I have my records right there. Another nice thing, um, and I'll get into the program that I that I use. I got this idea from Mike Becker over at GoTech Technical Specialist. I will put a link in the description of of his channel, and uh, he he did a couple of videos using the the Microsoft Whiteboard, which is it's a great program. And I was using this for uh, for a couple of weeks. And I really did enjoy it. And the program that I use is very, very similar. The difference with the program that I use is that I'm actually able to share this information. I'm actually able to send all my documentation. Um, I can send this page, this file, whatever it may be. I can actually send it to the sh send it to an email, send it to the shop. And the shop can you know review it as far as you know cody checked this cody checked this um you know he eliminated this um this is good this isn't good and you know i have all my notes in one place i have all my documentation in one place the program that i really enjoy using is the microsoft OneNote. i like the OneNote because i can end up putting i can end up putting the shop's information so if this is a shop that i i visit frequently you know, I put the I put the shop in there, and then you know I can I can really it's a good filing system is how I feel. Uh, so I have all this documentation that I can go back to at any time. It ends up saving it to the cloud, so I can access it from any device. And like I said, I can I can send you know I can send these pages um, to the, the to the shops, and they can review them and stuff. So it, it just I feel that it, it's it's a I like this program and you know if you guys aren't using this maybe it's something you check it out because having any kind of tablet or anything else I mean this prevents me from having to print up paperwork wiring diagrams man I really like to see them in front of me um, I really go uh, I don't just look at wiring diagrams I like highlighting you know the power feeds and the grounds and and, and uh, you know, really going through and physically touching the wiring diagram so I physically know, like, how does this system work? How does this um, component work? So let's uh, let's get into the Microsoft OneNote with the Surface Pro. All right, so first things first, you know, so Microsoft OneNote. Uh, I did a couple changes, settings and stuff with the, with the Surface Pro pin. Uh, and so how I like to do it is how I can pull up the program quickly 
is just a double click with the pin. And as you can see, it pulls up the Microsoft OneNote. So it's gonna load into here. We're just gonna go back here. And as you can see, you know, I have a couple shops in here right now. And, you know, so I can I can really, you know, dial it in. And, you know, I have the shop's shop's name and each each shop has their own uh has things inside. Uh let's go to you know Garcia's for, for an example. There's a couple vehicles in um Garcia's. I need to go through and, and, and fix the labeling a little bit more. But like I said, it, it's nice. You can put the shop in there and then from that shop you can put each individual car that you have worked on. And like I said, you can come back to this at a later date. Uh you know, you can you can really you can really customize it the way that you want it. So let's just kind of go through a couple things here. So, you know, let's just say, you know, Hammett's Garage. So this was an electronic brake control module replacement. Okay, so right here, and, and with the with the touch screen and everything else, it's really nice because you're able to really zoom in, zoom out. But with this, right, so I went into service information, you know, whatever it may be, if it's all data, Mitchell, Moto Logic, and this was an electronic brake control module replacement. And it was on a Ford Escape 2009. Okay, so, you know, how do you go about this? You know, I yes, I've done a couple in the past, but it's always nice to, to have the documentation in front of you if, if every year programming could be just a little bit different. And this was a used ABS module that was going in. So, you know, so I went to the service information that I use and I was able to take a screenshot. And now taking a screenshot with the Surface Pro, again, is super easy. Uh, I, it's just one click of the button. And as you can see, it's screenshotted. And let's just say, for example, so now that right there, it saved the screenshot. And if we go up in here to the clipboard and we just go to paste, you can see it popped up that service information right here on our OneNote. Uh, granted, this is obviously I just took a screenshot of the screenshot. <laughs> so I took a screenshot of the screenshot and put it back on here. Obviously, that's we don't we don't need that. Uh, so I'm actually going to throw this in the trash. But this is something that, so I'll go and take a screenshot from the service info, information, throw it in here, and then, you know, I'm able to write on the screen and everything. And, and as you can see up here, go up here to the top here. I apologize for my handwriting in advance, but so the shop installed a quote unquote, you know, new used module, uh, which already had the VIN wrote into the module. Uh, and so the first step I installed old module connector to perform a PMI. This pulls the information out of uh, the original module before installing into the new module. So perform the PMI uh, once it, in, once it uh, said to install the new module, I disconnected the connector, put it on the connector that was, you know, the ABS unit that was installed into the vehicle. Um, and then after the programming, I performed the the HCU bleeding uh, procedure. This was something that they were not able to perform with the old module, uh, just to show that you know this vehicle is properly working compared to it not working before, because it was setting codes and stuff in there. So it was not able to do the the bleeding procedure. But it, you know, again, you have the PMI um, information right here that you can you know just kind of go through. And you know, everything's right here. Here's the documentation. Now, if you look up at the top right, right here, um, we have the share button. Now, if you hit the share button, you can end up typing the email, which I have every shop's email uh, down um, in my database. So I have every shop's email. That's where I send my invoicing and, and everything else. It really prevents me from having to do any kind of a, uh, using my printer. Uh, I do have it if I have to, but it just, it just takes time. I'm really trying to be paper free, uh, not having to deal with plugging in the printer, you know, hooking up the inverter, you know, all that kind of stuff. So type in the email, I send this off to, to the shop and they're able to see like, 
you know, these are the this is the procedure that I did with the service information. These are the steps that I performed, and you know, call it a day. So that's this, you know, that's just one example. Let's go into we'll go into the Scion TC. Okay, now the Scion TC had it came in for a check engine light. Came in for a check engine light and you know what? I thought I had a full health report here. I guess I did not. Normally, well, I try to. I'm, this is still a learning curve for me, guys, so so bear with me. But I like to take pictures of, of the, the codes that were in the system. Uh, doc, like I said, documentation. This is something that I will attach to the files that the, the shop sees or the customer sees that you know it had these codes in the system and these were the codes that i were i was addressing so anyway it had a check engine light and it had a p0171 as you can see right here so check engine light was on it had uh you can see the freeze frame let's zoom in and if we look at the freeze frame here So obviously it shows the the air, mass airflow grams per second 2.79, short term fuel trims 3.1, long term fuel trims 35.2. So that's obviously an issue. We have a, a vacuum leak, and this is at idle, uh, 723 RPMs, vehicle speed zero. Uh, so this is you know this is a good indication of a vacuum leak. Uh, so coming up here, this is just a a screen this is just a picture of the um, of the scan tool which you know I can either this is just me taking a picture of the scan tool and loading it onto here with the the camera of the service pro and let's zoom out a little bit and so check engine lights on I sprayed brake clean on the intake gaskets mass airflow grams per second came up and trims went down needs intake gaskets so let's just go in here so as you can see grams per our short-term fuel trim uh, before was I'd say man that say probably about three percent and when I sprayed the brake clean you can see where they went you know it went down all the way to negative 21.1 percent okay uh, now, if you notice the mass airflow grams per second when I sprayed that as well, it went all the way from two two volts all the way up to two or not two volts two two grams per second all the way up to two point eight grams per second. So this this one was just this one was you know pretty easy. It wasn't wasn't too hard to find the find the vacuum leak on that. So it needed needed intake gaskets. So that was one issue that was addressed. Uh, so, you know, documentation, CYA, right? So let's just zoom out. So customer was also um, having an issue. Yeah, so the customer was also having an issue with their tachometer. And so with the vehicle running, the instrument cluster was not showing uh, RPM. It was stuck at zero. So, you know, first first things first is going to service information and, and kind of seeing, you know, the wiring diagram. How does how does this work? So if we go in here and we look, you know, so this is me taking a screenshot and putting it on to this paper or onto the OneNote. And this way I can annotate it and I can put my arrows and I can write my notes and, and you know, it just really helps me kind of stay focused. You know, I already did, I already checked this. Uh, I already checked this. I, I didn't check this. This is the next step or, or whatever it may be. Uh, especially when you're getting into like a power distribution where you may have, you know, four wiring diagrams that of the complete system that you need to look at. Well, I start getting confused when I'm starting to jump through pages and you know I really like to see everything laid out in front of me it just helps me understand things a little bit better uh, some guys may be different but that's just it's kind of how I work so pretty simple you know uh, the ECM sends out the tax signal and it goes through a junction connector right here and it goes into the combination meter well 
this combination meter is super easy to, to remove. It's just got the bezel and then it's got one screw holding it in. So easiest way that I found to, to attack this is actually going to the instrument cluster. So I ended up removing the instrument cluster, uh, letting it hang. Uh, this way I can check my powers and my grounds going to the instrument cluster. Uh, I can, and I can also check the RPM signal. So if you can see here, so let me zoom out. So the tachometer was obviously an op. My first step was to check the signal at the cluster. Uh, and so I grabbed the good old U-scope and with the vehicle running, I had a good signal at the instrument cluster. That it, you know, it, obviously it, I say right here it needs cluster. I still have to verify my powers and grounds to the, uh, to, uh, to the cluster. But that was another thing that I did notice that the ECM was reporting RPM. So obviously if the ECM is reporting the RPM, it sends it out to the cluster. So I felt that I didn't even need to go to the ECM to check. Uh, my easiest connection I felt was the TAC or the cluster. So I went right to that. So Toyota is super awesome and not all the time, but Toyota on this case, it, it really was. And you can see right here, it's got the instrument cluster uh, uh, connector view. And, you know, it's actually giving you a, uh, what the RPM signal should look like at the cluster. And that's exactly what we have, right? So uh, I, I'm really not concerned with the wiring integrity or anything from the ECM to the cluster. Uh, I did try wiggling the connector a little bit to see if I could get it, if it was a pin fitment issue at the cluster. And uh, it, I didn't see any of that. Uh, I also put down here in case I needed to go to it or whatever, but it has the ECM connectors right here labeled out and then the combination meter again. And you know, what pins should have what okay so so verified we have you know the rpm signal so next thing you know it, it like i said was checking powers and grounds so coming over here let's verify powers and grounds get some coffee all right, so check powers and grounds at cluster with the test light. Really, you know, I like loading the circuit. And so let's kind of, let's go, let's go in here and see where powers and grounds are. So, you, you know, something that I do like, and I didn't necessarily do it on this one, but we do have the highlighter functions up here that we can go in and, you know, we can, can highlight a, highlight a circuit uh you know whatever it may be and you know we can really you can do it just like how you had a piece of paper um i didn't do that on this one but you know you really have you really have a lot of options up here if you go in over here to shapes this is where you can draw arrows you can put boxes um, math formulas whatever it may be as far as that so let's go over here and you know so we have so we want to check the ignition fuse, 10 amp fuse. So we have this one right here, pin four. We have, so that's hot and run or start. We have hot at all times, right? And then we have this ECM fuse right here. And that's hot at all times. And nor <laughs> man, my lines are horrible right now. <laughs> Obviously, it's better. I have my keyboard down and everything, so it's 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 hard for me to draw a straight line right now. But just bear with me. Uh, and then we have this hot at all times uh, fuse ten or a ten amp fuse. Let's come down here, draw it. God, those lines are ridiculous. Anyway, so you get you get the idea on that. So let's say, okay, so powers, pin six is red, right? So go to the ECM right here, pin six is red. So that is 
hot at all times, right? That's what the wiring diagram says. So let's just see here. Then we have pen four, light green. Pen four, light green. Light green goes up and it says hot and run or start. So pen three is violet. Pen three is violet. And that goes up and that says hot, hot at all times. And then we have pen 30 is pink. So let's go down here to pen 30. Is pink and that one is hot at all times. Okay, well, let's get this stuff off the screen. I don't like the way that looks. Uh, so, you know, we think we, you know, we're going to be checking our powers and grounds. And then we have uh, our ground at, at pin one, which is brown. So pin one, if we look here, this is ground. Okay. And usually my powers are a different color than my grounds. Uh, and then switched power is, it, you know, I, I really like to go in. If you guys haven't checked out a George Minshew, uh, wiring diagram class. I really strongly suggest it. It's pretty pretty awesome. So we're just gonna go in here. Let's you know let's take some pictures, and so we have power at pin three. Okay, and you can see where the test light test lights. I'm I'm hooked up to to ground, uh, and I'm just going to the cigarette lighter. Uh, I didn't go to the battery on this, which that's I really strongly suggest anytime you know going to to a to a ground uh, or going to the main main ground feed, which would be the ground, which would be the battery. But in this case, I just had a, a cigarette lighter adapter and the cigarette lighter that I have bananas on. So I have a power and ground right there. So as you can see, we have power on pen three. So, okay, we're good there. Uh, now I switched my test light to, to power and now my test light is looking for a ground. So we have a good ground on pin one, okay? And I have the instrument cluster disconnected and my incandescent test light and check and ground. So we're moving on. So those two are good. So pin four, again, pin four, we have a good loaded circuit. Okay, pin six right? Pin six, no power. Hmm. Okay. So let's go back here again. Pin six, no power. So pin six is right here. Try to do a better job drawing a line. What does it say? It says hot at all times. So shouldn't matter if key is on or off, right? That's what the wiring diagram says. So, uh-oh, we're missing something here. So let's go back to this. So did some research and I'm like, okay, so pin six got no power. Uh, wired, wiring diagram is, so the wiring diagram is actually wrong saying pin six is hot at all times. Well, let's go into, uh, a different wiring diagram source, right? So here is a screenshot. It's just a picture view of another diagram. And if you look, this is so it's a power distribution diagram that I'm in. It's not showing the whole thing. I was, just took a picture of my. Uh, Picture of the service information. I did not do a screenshot or anything, but if you're looking here, so that fuse pump, oh, hold on, let's go. What's that fuse labeled? So this is the fuse panel, seven, seven and a half amp fuse, right? So we're gonna go over here. Oh, if I can find it, go back over here. Seven and a half amp fuse panel fuse. Okay, so here's the fuse, seven, seven and a half amp. But if we come up here, not sure how this is hot at all times. This is uh, this is a switched power. Okay, 
So that diagram, you know, is the diagram wrong or are we missing that power feed? Uh, is it in fact a, a um, hot at all times circuit? Well, and obviously I don't show you the, the top half of it. It was, that was bad on my end. Sorry about that. But thing is doing, let's, let's look at this, this relay. So it's got this relay and it's also got the tail lights on here. Okay. So it's got the left license, you know, left license plate light, right parking lamp, left parking lamp. So we have the combination meter, radio receiver. So just looking at this, this is, oh crap, I got rid of my arrow. Let's put another arrow back in there. So point, point of the story is that that redrawn wiring diagram, this is also redrawn too, but this is just in a different area. This is in the power distribution diagram. It's showing something different than the whole schematic diagram. And this is where, you know, it, it, you have to use logical thinking. And it's nice seeing everything drawn out, you know, kind of laid in front of you and everything. So, you know, seeing this circuit and seeing, you know, it's a fuse panel, it, it's talking about the radio receiver, the lights, everything else. You know, to me, this is it. Yeah. From this diagram here, it's a switched power insert, switched power input. So that being said, let's turn the headlights on. I get it's it's let's turn the headlights on. <laughs> so we turn the headlights on and here you can see we have power to the cluster. So this is for the backlit display. So that, that wiring diagram uh, over here is, is not, is not correct. You know, this is not a hot at all times circuit. Easy enough, you know, but this lay it out, I was able to, to write my notes and that's that's where we're at and you know so as you can see here you know this box right here is the cluster diagnosis okay so then we come down here there was another complaint of the sunroof not opening and same kind of thing you know check powers to the module uh, pin a you know so we Ended up checking powers and, and grounds to to the the module and the the motor is no good. The sunroof motor is no good. So that's just that's just one vehicle here, guys. You know, I have I have a bunch. Um, you know, this is this vehicle right here was a 2005 Chevy Silverado. I got called out to that uh, an, another programmer programmed this control module, uh, and then it became a no start. The vehicle thought it was a hybrid. It's a long story, <laughs> uh, and, and that's not something I did a video on. It, I wish I would have, you know. Now looking back, because it was a it was a pretty good one. This is another one of the shops that, that I service, and I got called out. Uh, they did uh, trans. They did a new transmission in this vehicle, and they needed the transmission uh, strategy numbers put into the. into the TCM. So again, service information right here, screenshot, put it right on here. It shows where the location, where the location of the tags should be. Uh, they actually had the tag still in the, um, the envelope that the transmission comes in. And so I didn't have to crawl underneath the vehicle to grab these numbers or anything. Uh, so after I was done with it, they put it back up in there. They put the sticker where it should be. And you know, it just, it kind of tells you how to do it. Again, you know, information. Uh, some some vehicles, the the strategy number is actually stamped on the valve body. So then, you know, you have to go into a transmission shop and be like, "Hey guys, there's no sticker or anything on this. We have to drop the the pan, the the transmission pan, in order to get the strategy numbers." That's obviously not a not an awesome thing to tell a shop. You know, you need to disassemble so I can program this. But it is what it is. Some every manufacturer is going to be a little bit different Ford, you know, if they did not have the sticker, that's what we would have had to do. And I just noted in here, I used four scan to, to write the solenoid ID. I did not use IDS. It is 
quick, easy, and painless with, with Forescan. It, it's just really awesome. So again, here's, uh, here's another company that I, that I service. And this was, let's go to the Ford Escape. Ford Escape, same thing, they replaced the transmission. So come in here and I got my documentation up here. You know, first step, used Forescan to write solenoid ID strategy into the TCM, programmed the PCM to the latest calibration using IDS. Uh, I reset the trans adaptives and then four, I reset the, the cam, the keep alive memory. And here's the information. Here's where the sticker is going to be located. These, you know, the strategy IDs, the solenoid body identification, uh, pretty much saying if it's not there, you need to remove the pan, you know, so we, we have all that information right there. Uh, I do put, I'm trying better to take a, take a picture of the, the VIN or write down the VIN and everything. Uh, I do take a picture. Every, every invoice does get uh, the VIN added to the invoice uh, so I can keep track of you know, the, the vehicles and stuff. I did write down their new strategy number, their new um, solenoid body ID. And like I said, I shared this information with that shop, hitting that share button at the top. And, you know, here's just some screenshots of the procedures that I did. This is the four scan. You can see in here, current solenoid strategy number, and it's got the number, solenoid body ID, and it's got the number. So that was su successfully written. Uh, the blocks programs successfully. You know, it, again, it's just, it's, CYA, it's covering your butt. Let's go to this E350, for example. So this was an ECM replacement on an E350. Uh, used IDS to program new ECU, went to PMI, performed a perimeter reset after the flash. Uh, it, and, you know, I just put a note in here. If perimeter reset is not done, vehicle won't start, uh, security light will be flashing. And that's what it was. Uh, and just another note. I did not need two keys, even though it says you're going to need two keys. You don't need two keys uh, if you're just performing the perimeter reset. But right here is the pre-scan. And you can see P0204, uh, P0443, P2197. So those, those codes were in the system before I replaced the PCM, okay? So I do my procedure, do the PMI, install the new PCM, do the perimeter reset, get the vehicle to start, and I start it up, and that's what it looks like. This is the power balance test. The, this vehicle's running, running, not, yeah, it's running bad, running, running really, really bad. Now, if we can look here, this has all 10 cylinders, this is a 10 cylinder, and it's got the firing order up here on top, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, one, six, five, 10, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine. So if we come over here, one, you can see cylinder one, how it's dropping down here, cylinder five is dropping down, cylinder two is dropping down, cylinder three. So these drop downs, these are misfires. And this is a histograph, so it's, it's showing each time it's misfiring. You can see this This should be just a solid straight line. That means that each cylinder is contributing equally. Well, it's not, obviously. Cylinder three, drop down. Cylinder four, drop down. What's in common? Well, if anybody knows Fords, they know that they, uh, their, how they, um, their cylinder block identification uh, bank one is on passenger side and it goes cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, four, five on this case since it's a 10 cylinder. And then bank two is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if we look at this, we have one bank completely um, failing the, the power balance. And this is before it actually went into closed loop. So it was setting a code for, uh, I think, bank one. Uh, I don't know the code description. It didn't show me on, on this, but pretty much that the O2 sensor stuck lean. 
um, and they replaced the O2 sensor. It was still stuck lean. They said it needed a PCM, put a PCM in it, and this is this is how it you know this is how it looked before it even went into closed loop. So if it's running like this before it even goes into closed loop, it's not even watching the O2 sensors. So it's not an input issue from the O2 sensor. There's there's something else going on. There's either a huge vacuum leak or or it's mechanical. And I told the shop, you know, look, I programmed it, um, showed them the screenshot. I even shared it with their email. This is how it's running after the PCM replacement. My job, my what my service that you called me out for is done. Do you guys want me to continue further as far as to diagnose it? You know, this is a separate charge to diagnose now because I already performed my 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 what I got called out for. Uh, they said that they're going to have the tech look at it because uh, he obviously misdiagnosed it, which it is what it is. I mean, this unfortunately, uh, there I go to a number of shops and and the modules don't fix the vehicles. Uh, so again, it is what it is. So, um, you know, I still perform my service, so I still need to get paid. And, but this covers my butt that look, it's programmed, it's programmed successfully. It's out of my, out of my hands, unless you want me to continue further with it. So again, documentation, 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 right? So, so that's it guys. I, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you guys haven't tried it yet, you know, the OneNote is pretty sweet, especially with the Service Pro. Um, taking the screenshots, just I you do it set, I have it set up to just the one click to go into the OneNote program. You got the two clicks and, you know, uh, you can put those screenshots. It, it just is really convenient for myself and it's convenient that I can share this information with other shops and uh that's kind of where it's at so hey i appreciate all of you guys uh tuning in bright and early on a on a monday morning so i hope everybody has a good week and we will talk to you guys later thank you